Hey guys, in today's class we are going to learn about modal verbs. Now modal verbs are sometimes categorized in auxiliary verbs and therefore some grammarians also call it modal auxiliaries. But for this class we'll just keep it simple, we'll call them modals. So what are modals and when are they used? So modal uh, verbs, I'll give you some examples. They are words like can, should, could, may, will, all of these words. And what modals do, what these words here do is that they express ability, they express possibility, uh, probability of something. Um, they are used when we want to ask for uh, permission or denote obligation. And these uh, functions um, are, and these are the functions of modal verbs. We have modal verbs uh, which are one word verbs. Then we have something known as modal phrases. Now modal phrases are also known as uh, semi-modals and they are nothing but a combination of auxiliary verbs, combination of helping verbs. Yeah, we learned about helping verbs in our last lesson. So uh, coming back to modal phrases, they are a combination of auxiliary verbs and they also have uh, the preposition to. So an example of a modal uh, phrase would be ought to, which is a modal phrase or the word have to. So we have the auxiliary have plus we have the, prep, the preposition to and those are our modal phrases. Let's move on to our first pair which is can and could. Well, have you ever thought about when one can use can and when one should use could? Well, in today's class, we are going to look at the modals can and could and we are going to understand when should one use them. So let's look at its first use, which is to show ability or lack of ability. Let's understand the first function better with the help of these examples here. The first example sentence is Tom can write poetry. So here the modal is can and the word can is used to express ability. We are talking about Tom's ability to write poetry. Let's look at the second sentence. Lisa can't speak French. Okay, our modal is can't here. It means cannot. Lisa can't speak French. That means here we are talking about Lisa's inability or her lack of ability to speak French. Let's look at the third sentence. When I was a kid, I could climb trees. Okay, so here we have used could and not can. That is because when we talk about ability or lack of ability in the past, we use could instead of can. And therefore, I have used when I was a kid in the past, I could climb trees, but now maybe I cannot. So, so in the past form, we use could when we want to express ability or lack of ability. So, this was the first use of the modals can and could. Let's take a look at the second use. We use can and could when we want to denote possibility. So, let's take the first sentence. You can catch the 930 train. So, when I use the modal year, which is can, when I say you can catch the 930 train, I mean there is a possibility for you to catch the 930 train. So, here the scan denotes possibility. Let's look at the second sentence. Tom can't see the tiger anymore. So, here when I say Tom can't see the tiger anymore, I mean it is impossible for Tom to see the tiger. So, along with possibility, it also denotes impossibility of something or doing something. So, let's take this sentence, Tom can't see the tiger anymore. Here in this sentence, we are talking about Tom's impossibility to see the tiger. Let's take a look at the third uh, third function of the modals can and could. The third function is when we ask or when we give permission. So the first sentence is, can I borrow your pen? So here I have used the modal can to denote or to ask for permission. So that is the third function. And let's look at the next sentence. You can borrow my pen. So I have asked you, can I borrow your pen? I'm asking for permission. And you say, yes, you can borrow my pen. So here, here you have used the word can to give permission. Let's look at the next uh, function of the modals can and could, which is to make a suggestion. So when I say, like I have said in this sentence, you could take the art class, I'm giving you a suggestion by using 
the modal could. So I, I'm just giving, I'm just telling you to do something. It's my advice. It's a suggestion. So these are our four functions of the modal scan and code. The first one is ability. When you want to express ability or lack of ability, you use the modal scan and code. The second one is when you want to show something is possible or something is not possible. The third is when you ask and when you give permission, like in this case, can I borrow your pen? Yes, you can borrow my pen. And the fourth case is when you want to make a suggestion, like I've, I've made you a suggestion here that you could take the art class. Well, let's look at the next set of models, which are may and might. We are going to look at modal verbs would and will. Well, most of the times these models will and would are used interchangeably. And guess what? They can be used interchangeably in more situations. But firstly, I want you guys to take a look at the uses of models will and would. The first use is in formulation of future tenses. So let's take a look at this example sentence. John will probably call you. So here we have used our modal will to formulate a sentence in future, in the future tense. And that is the, that is the main use of uh, our models will and would. They are mostly used in formulating sentences in the future tense. So if I say, you know what? John wants to talk to you. And what would you say then? You would say, yes, I'll call him. So you have used I'll, which is a contraction for I will, uh, and you have formulated a sentence in the future tense. So that's how we use will and would. The first use is to use will and would to formulate sentences in the future tense. Let's take a look at the second use. Secondly, will or would is used to make a request. Let's take a look at this sentence. Will you give me a hand, please? So here, the modal will is used to make a request. We can also use the modal would here and you can you also use other modals like could. Now all these uh, modals that I just mentioned will, would and could, these modals are used to make a request. Will you give me a hand please? So I am making a request to someone. Now thirdly, would is used when we, uh, when we are referring to or when we are framing a conditional sentence. What is a conditional sentence? Conditional sentences start with if. Let's take a look at this sentence. If we had the time, we would call you. Here the modal would has been used in a conditional sentence. We can also say if we have the time. Here we have used in the past tense, but we can also use it in the present tense. If we have the time, we would call you. So here the third usage of would is to use them in conditional sentences. Now, would is also used when we talk about habits in the past. Uh, which other modal do we use when we talk about habits in the past? We use the modal used to and similarly, we also use would. Let's take a look at the sentence. When I lived in the city, I would walk every day. So here I've used the modal would to refer to or to point out to a habit that I had in the past, but I don't anymore. So here I'm saying when I lived in the city, I used to or I would walk every day because I'm referring to a habit in the past and I don't do it anymore. And finally, would is also used in polite expressions. Let's take a look at the first sentence. What would you recommend? So when I say what would you recommend? So uh, let's just uh, take a situation here. Imagine you are at a, at a very nice fine dine restaurant. You are having dinner. And you're looking at the menu, but you're kind of confused as to what to order. The waiter passes by and uh, you are confused and you tell him that, you know, I do not know. I can't decide here. And what would you say? You would say, well, what would you recommend? So here I've used word in a polite expression. Well, um, so let's look at the second sentence. I would like a cup of coffee. So... So in the second sentence, I would like a cup of coffee. I have used would to tell someone politely that I would want some coffee. And these are the five uses of the models will and would. They are used in the formulation. This is like the primary use of our model. They are used in the formulation of future tenses. They are also used when we want to make a request to someone. And uh, would is used in conditional sentences. Condi uh, conditional sentences are those sentences that start with if. 
uh, would is also used when we talk about habits in the past. So like in this sentence, when I lived in the city, I would walk every day. So I'm referring to a habit in the past. I don't do it anymore. And finally, would or will can also be used in polite expressions. Also, an important thing to understand here is that would is much more polite than will. So if I say, will you pass me the book? And I could also say, would you pass me the book? But would is more polite and I would suggest you or I would advise you to use it in a much more formal setting or in a setting where you want to sound polite. So I hope you all have understood when to use will and when to use would. Let's move on to our next set of modals. So let's look at the modals may and might. So when do we use may? We use may when we want to ask for permission or somebody tells us that something is not allowed. That is when we talk about prohibition, but in a very formal way. So um, may is something that you would use probably at your workplace or when you're talking to the principal of your school uh, or your teachers for that matter. You normally wouldn't use may when talking to your friends or talking in an informal context. So let's look at the first example. You may start eating now. So here the modal may is used and here someone is giving you permission to start eating now. So it is used very formally. The second sentence is you may not wear sandals to work. And again, may is used here to show prohibition that you cannot wear sandals to work. Let's look at the second use. When you want to uh, politely request someone for something, you use the modal may. Uh, well, have you ever been to, uh, you know, these malls and then there are these customer service desks? So, uh, you know, the next time you go, probably you should notice this, that they have a big board there. May I help you? And when they say, may I help you, they are politely requesting you that may I help you with something. And th that's where we use the word may when we want to politely request someone for something. Let's look at the third use of may. When we want to denote or express possibility. So when I say our company might get the order, here I have used the modal might. I'm using it to express that there is a possibility for the comp for our company to get the order. I'm not confirming anything, but I'm just saying that our company might get the order. So that might happen in the future. So it's a possibility in the future. Uh, the fourth use. So the next use of the word might is to politely suggest someone. So here we have polite suggestion and let's take a look at the sentence. You might like to try the pizza. So imagine you are in a restaurant, okay? And you are looking at the menu, but you are a little confused as to what to order. So you're thinking, and the waiter comes by. The waiter says, uh, and you tell the waiter, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really confused. I don't know what to try. I don't know what to eat. And the, the waiter is gonna say, well, you might try the pizza, it's our specialty. So here we have, you might like to try our pizza, which is a polite suggestion made by the waiter. Or that, that means that might is used when we want to politely suggest someone to do something or to try out something, the pizza in this case. So here our major takeaway should be that we use may and might in a very formal setting. You normally do not use... Uh, uh, may with uh, friends, you use it in a, maybe at your workplace or when you're talking to superiors or your, say your principal or your teachers, that is when you would use these modal words. These modal words are used to show uh, formal permission, prohibition, uh, polite request, uh, polite suggestion and a future possibility. So these are the functions of the modals may and might. Let's move on to our next set of modals. Let's look at our next set of modals which are shall and should. So when do we use shall and should? We use shall and should when we want to polite, when we want to give a polite suggestion to someone. Let's take the first example. Shall we dance? So when I say shall we dance, I am suggesting someone to dance with me. There's a difference, however. When I use the word shall, I'm pretty sure that the answer I'm gonna get from the person that I'm asking is going to be a positive response. For example, let's say um, 
you know, I am asking my father to dance with me. So I say, I ask my father, father, shall we dance? Well, he would say yes. I'm very sure about it that since he loves dancing, he would say yes. And in that situation where I'm expecting a positive answer, I would use shall. Whereas, uh, when would you be you should? So let's look at the second example. Should I call the doctor? I have used the modal should here and I have given someone a suggestion of calling the doctor. Since we saw in the first example, we use shall when we were sure about a positive answer. We use should when we are not so sure of a positive answer. Let's just say we are not sure. So it can be positive or it can be negative. And that's when you use the modal should. So the next function of the modals shall and should is prediction. Let's look at the uh, sentence here. I shouldn't be late. The train usually arrives on time. So here I am predicting something in the near future. I'm saying that I, sh I shouldn't be late because usually the train arrives on time. And that is when we use the modal should or in this case should not. Third function of the modal should is to give advice. So to give advice. Let's look at the sentence. You should read books. Here the modal is should and we have used should to give advice to someone. So if I were to give some advice to you, I would say you should watch this video to learn about models. So I have used the word should to give advice here. So the models shall and should have three functions. The first one is when you want to make a polite suggestion. We use shall when we are sure about of a positive response. We use should when we are not quite sure of a positive response. Then we also use should when we want to make a prediction in the future and lastly should is used to give advice. So these are the three main functions of the models shall and should. Let's move on to the next set of models. So our next model is must. So when do we use must? We use must when we want to express necessity or obligation. Let's look at the first example. You must improve your handwriting. So I'm using the model must here to express necessity. It is absolutely necessary for you to improve your handwriting. Uh, and also when I say obligation, I mean duty. When, so we want, when we want to talk about duty or when we want to talk about necessity, we use the modal must. Must is also used when we want to refer to or when we talk about logical certainty. What does that mean? Well, uh, take a look at the sentence. Living in such crowded conditions must be difficult. So, so you are living in a crowded place, okay? And living under crowded conditions is never easy. And therefore, I'm using this modal must here to denote logical certainty. Li you live in a, a crowded place or you live under crowded conditions, I'm sure it must be difficult. So here we have also used must to highlight or to show logical certainty. Now we know when to use must in terms of uh, when we talk about necessity, obligation or logical certainty. Now let's look at our next modal or should I say modal phrase. Remember I told you uh, in the introduction that we have something known as modal phrases or uh, semi-modals. Well ought to is our next modal phrase. Let's look at when ought to is used. Ought to is used when we want to denote or when we want to express moral obligation or desirability. Let's look at the first sentence. You ought to take care of your parents. So here, when I say you ought to take care of your parents, I mean that it is your responsibility. It is your duty to take care of your parents. And that's, that's when we use ought to when we want to talk about moral obligation Obligation means duty or desirability. Well, the second usage of uh, the modal phrase or to is when we want to talk about uh, probability of something in the future. So let's take this example. Prices ought to come down. So I'm making a, 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 a sort of a prediction here. I'm not sure whether it's going to happen or not. But uh, based on my calculations and based on my knowledge, it might happen. So that's where I used ought to. Prices ought to come down. I'm using ought to here to express probability.
Well, I hope you all have understood the usage of our modals must and our modal phrase ought to. Let's move on to the next set of modals. Now, we are going to look at our modals have to and need to. So, when do we use these modals? We use these modals when we talk about necessity or requirement. And one more thing to remember here is that we use them in the present and the future tense. So, let's look at the first example sentence. I have to apply for a visa to travel abroad, obviously. So, here we have used the modal have to, which means it is necessary for me to apply for a visa or it's a requirement that I apply for a visa to travel abroad. So, here we have used have to in the present tense to talk about necessity or a certain requirement. Let's take a look at the second sentence. I need to drop by his room to pick up a book. So, here I have used need to. So, in order for me to get that book, it is necessary for me to drop by his room and therefore I have used the modal uh, need to here. Also, an important thing that I forgot to tell you is that have to and need to are our modal phrases or they are also known as semi-modals because we use have which is our auxiliary with the preposition to. Well, let's move on with have to and need to now. So, we have had to and needed. What does that mean? An evident past. Well, what this means is that we use have to and need to in the present tense or the future tense and we use had to or needed to in the past tense. So, let me substitute uh, have to and need to with had to and needed to. So, the first sentence is I have to apply for a visa to travel abroad and if I have to refer to it in the past, I would say I had to apply for a visa to travel abroad. So, here I am referring to the past and I have used had to. The second sentence is, I need to drop by his room to pick up a book. So, if I have to refer to the sentence in the past, I would say, I needed to. So, I hope you all have understood when we use have to and needed to. We use them when we want to talk about something that is necessary or a certain requirement. Next, we move on to used to, which is also our semi-modal. It is a semi-modal because we have used the preposition to along with the word used. So, used to has one main use which is it is used to talk about or to denote habits in the past. Let's take a look at this sentence. I used to live in London. So, here, here we have used our modal used to and here I am saying that I used to live in London in the past. So, it is a habit or it's a situation that happened in the past. And it no longer exists. So, used to is used to talk about habits in the past or situations in the past that no longer exist. Well, I hope you all have understood the usage of have to, need to and used to. Until next time, happy learning.